Good morning. Believe it or not, this is September. We have just finished the month of August and we are in September. And before you know it, we'll be making plans for Christmas. Time is just really going by very, very quickly. I hope you're doing well today. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes. I want to talk to you about God's invitation. God's invitation. I don't know about you, but I love to get invitations. You know, I like when people invite me to a wedding, invite me to some event, and I especially like when they invite me to come and eat. I love to eat. I know it doesn't show, but I love to eat. <laughs> and so, but you, I'm sure, we all love invitations. And I was just thinking about this last night. Really, if you were to boil down the Bible to just one sentence, um, I would basically sum the message of the Bible this way. God says to come. Throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, it's God always inviting, always inviting us. And so, the passage I want to share with you today is from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 14. And um, so let me read it, and then let me just share quick thoughts, quick, a few quick thoughts with you this morning. All right, here we go. Luke chapter 14. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field. I must go and see it. <laughs> Please excuse me. Another one, another one said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I am on my way to try them out. <laughs> Please excuse me. Still another guy says, I just got married, so I cannot come. The servant, the servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servants, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, and the blind, and the lame. So the servant said, what, what ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get to taste my banquet. So, imagine that. Jesus gives this, this story, this little parable. And he says, there was a feast, and these people were invited. And every one of them, instead of gladly accepting the invitation, they began to make excuses. The first one said, I have just bought a field. I got to go see it. <laughs> now, that doesn't make any sense at all. You're going to buy a piece of land and you're not going to see it first? He said, let me be excused. The other, the other one says, I just bought five yoke of oxen. I need to try these things out. Have me, let me be excused. Imagine it's like going to buy a car. And you, you're not, you just pay for the car without test driving it. You know? The other guy said, man, I just got married. Please excuse me. Man, can you not just bring your new wife and come to that banquet? The Bible described it as a banquet. But um he told he said please excuse me you know and it's strange because god is always inviting us and you know we are so busy busy running here and there busy i've got to go to work busy i've got to do this i've got to do that and we are continually telling god i really don't have time Yet, God invites us, we turn him down, 
and he comes back and he invites us again it's like he is persistent always inviting us i remember growing up home i used to just love <laughs> getting invitations you know and in, in those days back home you just whenever there was a party in the neighborhood a wedding in the neighborhood you know you'll be glad if you received an invitation but let me tell you invitation or not <laughs> we just as little boys we just went i remember some friends of mine you know if i tell that story and call people's name they will know what i'm talking about but guys like jerry and brother Afa, remember we were invited we were well, actually we were not invited <laughs> Some somebody in the neighborhood was having a party and we decided, hey, we don't want any invitation. We don't need any invitation. We're just going to show up. And we showed up and the guy the guy just chased us away. It's different with God though. God invites us and he sends out invitations without discrimination. He sends out invitation to everybody. And God says, Come, come, come. So, in three places, God says, come in scripture. Let me just share just three places for you. God says to the thirsty, come and drink. Isaiah 55. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy you wine and milk without money and without cost. God is inviting the thirsty, the hungry, to come. God says, whatever your life is going on in your life, take a little while. God wants to get your attention. And God says to come. Come if you are thirsty. Come if you are hungry. Then in Matthew chapter 11, this one from Jesus, verse 28, Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me if I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here's another invitation. Jesus says, come, come. You who are weary. I wonder if you are weary today. You know, just, 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 just tired sometimes. Just frustrated. Sometimes you just feel depleted. Sometimes you just feel like you just cannot go on in life. You are tired of trying, trying stuff. You're tired of trying to make yourself happy. And God is saying, come, come. You are weary. You're tired of life. You're tired of trying. You're tired of experimenting. Jesus says, come who are weary and I will give you rest. You're looking for rest for your soul today? Jesus can give you rest and then another come invitation this time in isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18 the prophet isaiah says come and let us reason together says the lord though your sins are as scarlet i shall make them as white as snow an invitation to forgiveness an invitation to find life you know we can go on in life and accumulate stuff, have money, have a good job, have a nice car, have a nice house. But really, those things are all well and good, but they cannot give you rest for your soul. They cannot give you peace with God. And that's what God is saying to you. I want to give you peace. And God says, come, let us reason out. And you'll say, man, you don't know what my life is like now. Well, I don't know. But God does know everything about you. And no matter how, how, how far you are from God, no matter how broken up your life may be, Jesus can put the pieces together again and give you peace and joy and lasting satisfaction and really make your life worth living so here we are invited by god the god of the universe invites you he invites the thirsty to come and drink probably that's you today jesus says come and drink 
God invites the hungry to come and eat. I had a neighbor, you know, good neighbor. She used to always cook a lot of food. And every whenever she would cook and I am passing by, she would say, um, Joe, Vini Manji, that means in English, come and eat, come and eat. And, you know, whenever people invite me to eat, I just come. And God says, come if you are hungry, come and eat. Find satisfaction for your soul. He invites the hungry to come and eat. And then he invites the weary to come and rest. So God invites you today. Isn't it strange though that the whole Bible as we sum it up, we can sum it up saying that God says come. God is inviting us to come. And instead of us coming to God, we keep running away. We say, okay, I don't have time for God. And we put everything else ahead of God. Until the time when we get sick, we are on our bed. We cannot go anywhere. And finally, we say, okay, now I have nowhere to go. I cannot do anything. I can go to God. Even in those times, God still accepts us. And God says, look, I'm here for you. God is here for you. Probably there may not be many people in life who can truly say that they are there for you. Sometimes their friends will say, I'm there for you. I'm here for you. Call me anytime. And then when you call, they are not there. Either they are busy or they just do not take your call. But God says to us, I am here for you. There is never one time that you can go to God and talk to him and find that his line is busy. God is here for you today. So if you are hungry, spiritually thirsty, come to him. If you are weary, spiritually weary, come to him. If your sins have you burdened, Come to him if you're facing family problems, health issues. God is saying to you, come, come. That invitation God has placed in the mail for you, open it up. It's from God. It's to you personally. And the reason why he invites you is because he loves you. He cares about you. And he says to you, come. Would you come to him today? Come. Make some time for him. He's there. He's willing to receive you. I hope these words are an encouragement to you today. Whatever you are doing, always remember that God is there for you and he invites you to come and rest. Come and find peace. Come and find joy. Come and find a life that is really worth living. Come. Jesus says come. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. I'll see you again next week.